Thank you for joining us again today for one of our interviews from Car Baptist Church. Last time I was in discussion with Victor and Audrey Maxwell and we were considering mission matters. Uh, today I'm speaking to Clifford and Margaret Morrison and we're considering ministry matters. So it's great to have Clifford and Margaret with us. They're, they're members in Car Baptist Church. I'm going to ask uh, a few questions. First of all to Margaret. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background, where you were born, brought up, your family, uh, your church and when you became a Christian. Well, Andrew, I was born in Belfast, and I'm the youngest of four, three boys, and then me. And um, we went to a Presbyterian church in uh, downtown Belfast, and uh, that's where I was brought up. And uh, then I started to go to Sunday school in uh, Shankill Baptist, and we were all sent to the Sunday school there, as well as the brethren. So we were well churched, and then. Uh, I made my friends there. I joined the CE and uh, I became a Christian in 1962. I was brought up in a Christian home and we were sent to Sunday school and church and all the activities that go on in the church too. Very good, very good. Clever, a little bit about your background then, your family, church. Well, I suppose I didn't appreciate it at the time. Of course, you appreciate it now of having the privilege of being born into a Christian home. Um, my mother... Uh, died the night I was born and uh, I was brought up by a, a godly uh, aunt uh, and uh, my father married again when I was about eight or so, a very godly woman and so I was nurtured in the faith. Uh, my father was an elder in a Presbyterian church. We were very deeply involved in the life and work of the Belfast City Mission. And I got a grounding in the Word of God through faithful Sunday school teachers within the context of the church that my family was associated with and also within the context of the Belfast City Mission. I always say I wasn't sent to church. I was taken to church. And I sat with my father and other members of the family in church services. Um, I came to faith in my early teens uh, under the preaching of uh, Dr. Billy Graham whose services were relayed from what was then the Manchester City football stadium main road. Uh, and uh, these services were relayed to different centres in Belfast. And uh, uh, when I was in my early teens, I trusted Christ. I was brought up uh, in the uh, Robins, Light Boys, Boys Brigade, we got a Queen's Badge, and spent many happy years in that environment. And then after my conversion, I, I started to grow in grace and came to what I consider to be an understanding of uh, believer's baptism. Uh, I was baptised in Shankill Baptist Church, I think around 64, and I became a member of uh, Shankill Baptist Church. I a great debt to that church where I grew in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus. God was actively involved in Sunday school in our young people's uh, meeting, which was known as the CE, and also in uh, the work and ministry of the Male Voice Choir. That's where I cut my teeth in uh, testifying and trying to uh, speak a little word in the gospel. So that was a wee bit of my background. My background. Lovely. So how did you meet Margaret? Well, there was an attraction there whenever Clifford came to Shankill Baptist, and okay. you wonder what that attraction was. Okay. So uh, we started to go together, and then we got engaged. When were you married? We were married in March 1969. Okay. Good. 51 years married? 51 years. And what family do you have? We have a girl and two boys. Excellent. Judith, Gareth and Simon. Great. And grandchildren? We have six. Very good. Three older ones and three younger ones. Great. So you're married in 1969 then. Clifford, how did you get involved? In, <coughs> you say you cut your teeth in Shankill Baptist. How did you get involved in uh, more ministry? How, how was your call... <laughs> come about to full-time Christian ministry? Well, what happened was um, opportunity came to preach with the choir, male choir, and then I was invited to um, one or two services to be involved in youth ministry in the services. And then I felt the Lord exercising my heart regarding his work, his service. Uh, and I shared this exercise of heart with the elders of the church in Shankill. And they encouraged me greatly. They, in their words, they recognised gift. Uh, the pastor then was Pastor Carson, 
and he would have asked me to say a little word at the table to maybe give the word of the midweek and to be actively involved in the open air ministry of the church and all these things there seemed to be avenues through which uh, my gift was brought to their attention and uh, in 1966 uh, I went to Wales, the Bible College of Wales I studied there for two years and then uh, I worked with the Irish Baptist Home Mission as it was known then known as Baptist Missions Ireland um, and I worked in um, Limerick, Waterford in Escorthe, came north and did some missions uh, north and then there was a period of time when I went back into secular work and then Again, I continued to serve the Lord in Shankill Baptist Church through the ministry of Sunday school and youth work and choir. And then the Lord uh, opened up the door of opportunity. 1971, I accepted a call to a church of Billy Clare. And I was there for five years. Uh, and then I went to Kilkeel in the beautiful kingdom of Bourne, 1976, early 76 to late. Uh, 84, was there almost nine years. Uh, Judith, our first child, was born in Larne, so uh, she was with us in Valley Clare. And then God blessed us with two sons, two born men. Uh, uh, there was Gareth and then uh, Simon. And then in 1984, we went to uh, Portadown Baptist Church and spent almost 25 years there. And then after that, we went for eight years to Carr Church and uh, spent some time there and at the moment we're seeking to help the church in Cumber in a, a part-time interim pastor there and uh, we, we, we just give thanks to God for yeah. his goodness and his faithfulness. Very good. So that's from 1971 until now then, yeah. 49 years yeah. Yeah. in God's work in Christian yeah. service. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you, first of all, Margaret, as a pastor's wife, um, there are highlights and lowlights in, in ministry. What, what would you say were some of the challenges for you well, in ministry? Um, I was thinking this over, Andrew, and what a challenge for me was living, after living for nine years in the Kingdom of Mourne in Kilkeel, and, uh, which we thoroughly enjoyed, the country life, and uh, settled very well there. Um, and then the call came from Portadown. Now, I remember... Clifford said to me, Margaret, I believe God is calling us to put it down. Now, Judith overheard that uh, conversation, which was quite disturbing for her as an 11, 12-year-old. And um, one of the challenges was trying to convince a 12-year-old uh, that we were on the move again and we were moving from, moving from a country situation into a town situation. And... Uh, that was quite challenging for me mm -hmm. and uh, for a young girl. Uh, Gareth was eight and he, Simon was about two and a half. So Gareth, uh, Simon wasn't really aware of anything. So then when we moved in November, it was moving her into a school which the education was totally different to what it is in the mornings. So I remember the morning that we went up to leave her there at school and uh, going into a school of eight or 900, and she didn't know one. That was a big challenge. And I remember Clifford coming out and sitting, crying, and uh, saying, well, she's had to move because of us. It wasn't her moving on her own, but oh, no. because we mm -hmm. felt we should move. So that was a, a challenge, mm -hmm. but she settled in well. Gareth went to the local primary school and Simon went to nursery then, mm -hmm. you know. Big upheaval for the family. It was a big upheaval, it was. Mm -hmm. very, and trying to convince them that this was God's will for our lives. Yeah, yeah. Clifford, we'll talk to you about some of the highlights. I know you've said to me that many times the three years that you worked alongside me were probably the highlight of your career, but uh, there must be other <laughs> things that come close to that. Well, one of the things that really disappointed me when I got to know you better was uh, mm. I felt you had a grasp of the scriptures <laughs> and your capability in the Bible. But when it came to sport, you had a clue <laughs> because that was indicated in the team that supported Leeds United. Hopefully, you'll rise a wee bit higher in a few weeks' time and join the elite <laughs> at Anfield. But uh, the highlights for me, seriously, as I look back, the faithfulness of God, and I don't say that lightly, um, and the support that Margaret gave me. Yeah. 
I couldn't have done it without her. Um, our home became an open home. Um, and we took the attitude was, if people didn't like us the way they found us, well, too bad. We weren't going to try and put on a show for anybody. We were just going to be ourselves. But uh, Margaret supported me 100% and still to this day. And there were situations where maybe she was at home alone with the kids and I had to meet the demands of the ministry. Uh, and she was there uh, to support them and she kept the home going very, very well. Uh, and still does. She's the grandmother, she is the matriarch. So on, uh, she looks after them all and keeps them right. Um, we have met some choice friends in the mm -hmm. ministry. Um, colleagues that mean a great deal to us. We met some very choice believers in all our churches um, and still maintain some friendships. Hard to do it as regularly as you'd like to, but uh, uh, good friends. Uh, difficult as yes, but then we're soldiers in a warfare. Mm -hmm. We're in a fight. And, uh, but uh, the one who's with us is greater than the one who's against us. And, uh, you know, the, the highlights far outweigh the lowlights. Um, working with people who love the Lord. Uh, I don't want to uh, mention any names because that wouldn't be right, but some choice elders who have, who, whose memory still live with me. And, uh, you know, great men. And, uh, were a great blessing to me and a great strength to me and a great help to me. Mm -hmm. And I owe a great, a, a great debt to them. Yeah. Uh, so it was the faithfulness of God and friends and the fellowship of God's people. Um, someone said to me the other day, would you do it again? Yes. Yes. Uh, has it been easy? No. But uh, God never promised it to be easy. Mm -hmm. But he gives us strength for the day and all that we need for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, most in ministry, you see people at their, their heights and you see them at their lowest in, in life's experiences, you know, yeah. with the conversion and baptisms, and then you see people uh, and getting married to highlight, but then you're at people's bedside when they're facing incurable mm -hmm. sickness and yeah. facing death. So yeah. uh, you, see, you have the whole gamut of, of life's experience yeah. there yeah. as a pastor. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Um, we live in a, in, a, in a secular world, a postmodern world, Clifford, now, with where the, it's the era of fake news. So is preaching still relevant in the 21st century in Northern Ireland? Absolutely. Uh, 100%. I believe preaching is a divinely ordained means whereby God communicates his truth to his people and to unconverted. Um, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, without faith... It is impossible to please God. Paul tells us in Romans 10 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I believe that um, preaching, uh, W.E. Sankster in his generation said that preaching is in the doldrums. And if he said it then, hundreds of years ago, I mean, today it's under threat. And I think we need to, in some instance, recover. Uh, if you look at the architecture of our churches, the pulpit in many of our churches is central. Mm -hmm. And that is there for a specific reason. We believe in the centrality of the Word of God and the authority of the Word as it is preached. Uh, you know, Paul writes in his first letter to the Corinthians, uh, the preaching of the cross uh, to them that perish is foolishness, but unto us who believe it is the power of God. I believe our preaching has got to be relevant. Uh, I believe uh, our preaching has got to be authoritative, mm -hmm. and uh, we need to give ourselves to the Word of God and prayer as servants of God, but we must not neglect the preaching of the Word. And I think Paul highlight, highlights that in his final letter to his young son of the faith in Timothy where he calls Timothy to preach the word, to preach the word. And I would say that uh, to any young pastor um, and uh, to make that a priority in your ministry, to preach, to preach the word. Mm -hmm. 
still relevant. So in the back of that question, um, pastors are to preach and, and make uh, preaching a priority. How important to you is visiting uh, the congregation? Absolutely everything. Uh, Peter talks about the elders as those who labour among them. And I think you've got to be among your people. One of the, one of the uh, identifying marks of a pastor is that of a shepherd. He's the under-shepherd. The Lord Jesus is the chief shepherd. And uh, if you know anything about country life, that a shepherd is among his flock. Mm-hmm. When I was in the kingdom of Bourne, there were many people who had sheep. And at all times of the day, they were found among the flock. And that's where you've got to be among your people. How else are you going to get to know your people? Uh, you mustn't be aloof from your people. You must uh, send out the message that you're available, you're approachable. And also, I think in partial visitation, you disclose your humanity. You know, often think about what I said of John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. And that verse reminds us of his authority. He was sent from God but also of his humanity. And I think pastoral visitation is so important. It mustn't be replaced by sending texts. It mustn't be replaced by Facebook or online. It has got to take place on a one-to-one. You've got to be where they are and feel how they feel and see what they're going through. Uh, And I've made that a priority in my ministry, and I think if you ask any of the folk in my churches, they will say that uh, uh, Clifford Morrison was found among his people mm-hmm. at all times and on every single day. You that could call me, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm very glad of that. So I would say to young men get into the ministry, if you're not interested in uh, pastoring your people in this way, I would question again your calling. I mean, one of the qualifications is to care for the flock. You know, to care for the flock. Uh, and how else can you care for them is to be among them. I mean, uh, Paul talks about being like, like a mother. Mm-hmm. And all the imagery of the New Testament would seem to emphasize the importance of being among your people, visiting your people, being available to your people. Uh, that's how you understand. And I think that makes you sensitive uh, to the preaching of the word, uh, you know, in the Lord's day. Um, I think it's a sad thing if someone says, you know, he was great in the pulpit, you know, but once he stepped out of the pulpit, he was very hard to get near. Uh, and I, I, I think you need to work with that. Mm-hmm. Well, I have to say, personally, that's one of the big lessons I learned in the three years working alongside you, that, that the importance and significance of visiting people, get to know your people, and it helps your preaching as well. You can preach better into people's circumstance without identifying them uh, personally. So, And sometimes people share things with you that you need to hear in your home, which will sharpen your ministry and, uh, uh, you know, how to deal with criticism. I mean, there is destructive criticism uh, and there is constructive criticism. Mm-hmm. And I think if you, if you sense that your people love you, then you know there are certain things they're maybe saying for, for, for your good. Mm-hmm. And you if know, you so. said to show that you're real, that yeah. you're real, yeah. I think okay. was. Great. Lastly, last question to Margaret and Clifford. Have you a favourite Bible verse mm-hmm. or have you have a Bible passage you'd like to share with everyone? I have. I have one. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for wholeness and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Very good. Well, I was torn between... There are many verses come to mind, as you would know, being, being a pastor yourself. Um, I want to finish well. That's a big, big conviction, burden, mm-hmm. desire. I want to finish well. And this verse came to mind in Acts 20, 24, but I do not count my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course. I want to finish the course. And I want to finish it well. And with that in mind, here is a verse that constantly comes to my mind. In Philippians 1 and verse 6, Paul says, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. God has begun the work. God is continuing the work. 
and thank God he will complete the work. And that has been a great, even on days, maybe you're on the mountaintop, maybe days you're in the valley, but you know this is God's work. God has begun it. God will continue it. And God will uh, uh, complete it. Um, you know, and that, that is a verse that I want to finish well. And one of the things that, that encourages you to finish well to know that it's God's work. And uh, he's not finished with us yet. Good. I always think of a story of the young teenager who was a long Christian. He had a, a badge. And on the badge it said, be patient with me. God's not finished yet. <laughs> and I think all of us would need that badge mm -hmm. We're all, from time to time. You know? We're all very much a work in progress. You know? That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Thank you both for your time today. Hope you enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And thank you all for watching. Hopefully you'll see this interview quite soon. I want to thank Clifford and Margaret for their time. And thank you for watching today. God bless you. Hope you have a good day. Could I just say this, maybe before we go off there, uh, that uh, Andrew's now my pastor. And I appreciate his pastoral ministry. And I appreciate his preaching. And I know that the, the full good car would say amen to those uh, sentiments. We give thanks to God for... Andrew and for Deborah, and uh, we trust and pray that the Lord will use them. He has given them gift and ministry, and we pray that even the days that lie ahead will be the best days yet. So, Thank you very much. You. Appreciate your comments.